Good morning from beautiful Wondilagong. Um, I've just come back from a ride and I'm gonna share with you some um, a few stretches, a few yoga moves, um, which are really good for doing after a ride, um, particularly because you spend so much time in um, flexion. So if you imagine you're like this, so your hips are flexed, your um, shoulders are rounded. So we wanna really just open up and um, get a little bit of extension going into the hips and um, opening up the chest and through the front of the shoulders. So to start off with, I'm just gonna stay in a kneeling position and um, I'm gonna just add a little bit of spinal movement. So taking the right arm across the body so that you can get a really nice lateral stretch through the right side of the body. And then taking it back through the other way. So we're just gonna start with a few dynamic movements just to get the body moving a little bit more. And then adding in some twists. So taking it to the right, that's it, sorry, to your left, my right. And then inhaling back to center and exhaling to your right, my left. One more to your left. And then one more to the right. And then coming back to center, we're gonna take the hands behind the back, clasping the fingers together, squeezing the elbows and the shoulder blades towards each other, making sure that you're keeping a little bend in the elbows so you're not hyperextending through the elbows. And then trying to soften the ribs and keep the ears in line with the shoulders just so you're not forward, going forward with the head and the neck. Then releasing there and we'll take it into a low lunge so you step the right foot forward and tuck the back toes under and really try to lengthen the lower back the lumbar spine so that you can get as much extension through the hip flexors as possible and then to add more to that squeeze the left glute so that you can really start to get a nice stretch through that left hip flexor and to add on to that, to get a stretch up into the psoas, we're going to raise the left arm and just take it over across the body again. And then inhaling back to center, taking the left hand down to the floor. I prefer to stay on fingertips so that you're not jamming through the elbow and the shoulder. And just taking the left knee back a little bit further, I'm going to add a twist. And if you'd like to take this further into a nice quad stretch, reaching the arm back, bending that back knee. If you can't reach the foot, that's absolutely fine. Just keep it active. If you can reach the foot, to keep it active still, press the foot into the hand as you're pulling that hand closer towards you. So what you're trying to do here is get not only a nice quad stretch, but you're also trying to get a twist into the upper body. And then slowly releasing back. And we'll take the nice hamstring stretch, keeping it active, so pressing the right heel into the floor as you're drawing it back. And then coming forward. And we'll do that two more times, drawing it back, pressing the heel into the floor so that you can keep the stretch active still. And then taking it forward. And one more time, pulling it back. Coming forward, stepping it back, tucking the toes under, lifting the bum up and back into your first downward facing dog. Having a little walk, and just cycling out the legs so you can get a little bit more dynamic movement into the back of the calves. The legs, most likely after a bike ride, are feeling pretty stiff, pretty tired. I only went for a one hour bike ride, but still. <laughs> It does uh, stiffen up the leg a little bit. And then bring the knees back down to the floor. We'll do the other thing. Taking the left leg forward. Tucking the back toes under, reaching the arms up, pressing the pubic bone forward to lengthen the lower back. Squeeze that right glute. 
So you get a little bit more stretch to the, the right hip flexor and the psoas. And then reaching the left arm down, not touching it to the floor, just keeping it off the floor unsupported. So it's a more dynamic stretch. And then coming back up to center, releasing the right fingertips to the floor, reaching the left arm up and back. And then taking that right knee back a little bit further, bending the knee, either staying there if you can't reach the foot and just keeping it active, or otherwise holding onto the foot, pressing the foot into the hand as you pull the foot closer towards your bum. And that will give you a really nice stretch through the front of the thigh, just through the front of the hip. And also a nice twist through the spine, opening up through the chest and through the front of the shoulders. And releasing that down again, stepping the left foot back, tucking the toes under, and lifting up and back into your downward facing dog. You might even like to move a little bit through the head and the neck here. And then walking the feet up to the top of the mat, nice and slowly, soften the knees, and just let your body hang, let your, your spine hang. Just for a moment, you might even like to cycle out the legs, bend one knee, straighten through the other, getting into the hamstrings a little bit, giving them a nice little stretch. And then taking the hands behind the back again, I'm clasping the other finger on top this time to change the grip. And let the head and the neck completely relax. And then releasing the hands down to the lower back, down to the floor, and rolling the spine all the way up, keeping the knees soft. One vertebrae at a time. Reaching the arms up, smoothing the sun. Exhale all the way back. Just getting nice movement through the spine here. Inhale to lengthen. Halfway lift, keep the knees soft here and you can bend them as much as you need to. We're going to take a twist to the right, lifting the right arm up, aiming to keep the hips fairly level here so that you can get a nice twist through the spine. And then right hand down, left hand, you can bring it to the shoulder or up towards the sky. And then left hand down, stepping back into your downward facing dog again. And we'll add another twist into our downward dog, a little bit more challenging. So if you need to shorten your stance, you'll just walk your feet halfway through the mat, taking your right hand to the outside of your left calf or ankle and really looking underneath your left armpit, giving a nice twist through the spine again. Releasing the right hand down, left hand to the outside of the calf or ankle. And again, peering underneath the armpit. A nice, not only a twist, but a nice side stretch. Releasing the left hand down. On your next inhale, reach the right leg up towards the sky. Bend your knee, keep that glute engaged, so contracted. Open the hip only, so keeping the shoulders square. This is going to open up through the front of the hip again. And then we'll step that leg forward in between the hands. If it doesn't make it, help your, your foot up in between the hands, bend your back knee, squeeze your right glute and come up into a high lunge. And again, same thing in your low lunge, you want to press the pubic bone forward and keep that left glute engaged so that you can get that stretch. And this time we're going to add a little bit more of a challenging side bend. So if you take hold of your left wrist and pull it over towards the right, that will give you a stronger stretch, not only into the left side waist, but also into that left hip. Coming back to center, take the hands behind the back, clasping the fingers together, squeezing your elbows and the shoulder blades together, and then we'll take it forward into an arrowhead variation. And then reaching back up into your high lunge, hands down to the floor, Step back into your downward facing dog. Reaching the left leg up on your inhale. Bend the knee, open the hip, keeping your shoulders square here. So you're just looking to get that opening through the front of the left hip. 
keeping the left glute engaged. And then stepping that foot forward again in between the hands, helping it there if it doesn't make it. Bend the back knee, rolling up nice and slowly so you can engage the core. Reaching up, grabbing hold of your right wrist and side bending towards the left. Reaching back up into your high lunge. Again, clasping the other finger on top until you take it into a chest opener. Keep pressing the pubic bone forward, softening the ribs, and then taking it forward into an arrowhead variation. So back leg is nice and strong here. Inhale to reach back up into your high lunge. Exhale, hands to the floor. And again, step back into your downward facing dog. your next inhale rolling forward through the spine into your high plank you can either drop the knees down I'm going to today or you can lower down without the knees all the way to your belly and we're just going to add a little bit of prone back bending to move my water bottle out of the way to just get into the front of the body a little bit so pressing your pubic bone down into the floor keeping the glutes engaged and then lightly pressing into the fingertips using your back extent your extensive muscles in the back and then adding on a little bit of twisting wide hand cobra this is a really good way to open up into the spine into the front of the body especially after being hunched over back then then coming back down Taking the arms alongside the body with the palms facing down. Again, squeeze the butt, press the pubic bone down, lifting the chest and extending the arms. If you want to add the legs, you can lift the legs as well. No need to bring the legs together. You can keep them hips distance or even wider if you've got any lower back issues. And then slowly release. You can lift your head on top of the head and go to one side. And then coming back up into your tabletop, sitting back onto your heels. We'll just add a little bit of camel movement to finish off with. So prepping the quads just a little bit so that you feel that the front body is engaged. Tack your toes under and start to engage in your inner thighs. So squeezing your inner thighs towards each other, pressing your pubic bone forward. Leaning back. If that load is too much, keep your hands at your heart center, reaching up towards the sky as you come back. So you'll notice that I'm not sitting my bum back towards the heels. I'm keeping the pubic bone pressing forward. I'll just do a couple more of those. This will get the front body nice and engaged and contracted. One more. And then we'll add one arm at a time or one hand at a time. So touching the heel or the lower bum. And then the other side. One more to the left. And one more to the right. And then taking your hands to the bum, keep pressing the pubic bone forward but lifting your chest to the sky, squeezing the elbows towards each other. Your gaze can stay forward if you don't like the extension on the neck, otherwise you can lift the gaze up towards the ceiling or to the sky, even my, where I am today. And to come back out, the head comes last, using your front body strength to move forward, sitting back onto your heels, resting your hands on your thighs, and just closing your eyes so that you can connect with the breath not only connecting with the breath here but connecting with the physical sensations that you're feeling from that back bend and then coming into a transitional pose from your back bend bringing the forearms onto the floor, wriggling the hips from side to side. And then to finish, 
resting your head on top of your hands or if you'd like to come into a traditional child's pose, bringing your forehead to the floor and resting your arms next to your legs, letting the shoulders drop forward. And really just allow yourself to surrender and let go here. That is your 10 minute post ride yoga sequence. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm a little bit hot and sweaty because I've just come back from my ride and I've also been doing this practice in the sun. So let me know how you go with it. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon. Thanks very much.